Now, our, our next speaker, Karen Ball from Jobs New South Wales, they say uh, in life you can achieve anything you want if you have three things, uh, people, time and money. And the most important part of that is people. And Karen from Jobs New South Wales is going to talk to us about that very topic. Okay, well good evening everyone and thank you for making some time. Um, I think one of the things that really is so critical in when you're working on a small business is how do you actually get to that next stage of development? How do you actually cross what is effectively that credit value of death and go from what is a small business to a larger business? And really what we're trying to do here at Johnson New South Wales is find those businesses who are actually trying to scale up. So many of you have started your own businesses. Many of you are now probably in that stage where you're thinking, should I grow it further? Now the government is an interesting entity. And Dr. New South Wales is a relatively new part of the New South Wales government. We were created with a very distinct objective, which was to create jobs. So as we began our journey, which was only now 10 months ago, we were given a few tools. Um, one of them of which was um, a fund. So we are actually able to directly fund and enable businesses. But the other of which is that we are in the very unique position as a government agency that we can also advocate for change. And that means, of course, unlocking some of the, well, dare I say, things that get in the way of businesses being able to scale up as well. So what I'm going to talk to you about this evening are really some of the things that we do. Um, and remember, what I'm really trying to focus on are those organizations, those small businesses that are at that critical stage where you're really thinking to yourselves, I want to grow bigger but I'm concerned about some of those blocks that are in the way. And it could be a cultural thing, it could be, okay, I don't know if I've really got the risk appetite, but it could be as simple as, I'm trying to actually fund my way and I don't know because I have to put my house on the line or I've got concerns about just generally that sort of journey, which ultimately means I've got to take something on which I've never done before. So, um, okay, that's my title slide. So, to give you some ideas to what we're doing, so you can see here, we've got a target. Over the next 20 years, we're going to create a million new jobs. Now, we've been very lucky in New South Wales. The last 20 years have been really, really great for us, um, and we've had fantastic economic conditions. The reality is, though, is that if we don't be, if we're not more planful, if we don't get out there and actually put our arms around how do we engage more directly, we can't necessarily rely on the environment to just drive job growth. It just doesn't come necessarily. It can be, it can be good luck. It can be a good environment, um, but you also need at times to have a good plan as well, okay? So we've got a couple of things that you can see there on that slide. So I think one of the first things is we're very focused on what we're calling gazelles, okay? Gazelles are small to medium enterprises that are scaling up and growing fast, okay? And there's a more technical term, but look at it from the perspective, is, is your business is growing about 20% um, sort of CAGR, so you know, okay, sort of the actual growth rate um, over the last few years? And if the answer is yes, then definitely we'd like to talk to you. Um, we're very focused on startups. Startups are those early stage businesses um, who really are, if you like, the sort of the, the, the bed of small to medium enterprises. And by the way, we are great in New South Wales as starting businesses. When it gets a little bit more challenging is then when we move to that small business that's starting to scale. So when you go beyond 10 to 12 employees, what do you do then? A lot of people then sort of start to pull back and say, okay, I've sort of stopped now, I'm, I'm good with what I've got. Um, the MNCs and VIPs, so multinational companies and VIP companies, we're also trying to attract large-scale enterprises. And we heard earlier on from Google, so one of the things that we're working on is actually setting up um, a company like Google in a new location, which will be down at White Bay, near Balmain. Um, so how do we attract those companies to ensure that we, we really set them up in an environment like Optus has here, that really suits that sort of a company and how it actually brings a whole lot of its employees under one roof. Um, we're focused on the regional area. Um, we're here in Wright, so I'm not going to talk too much about the regions. We're sort of metropolitan here in this area, but for those of you that are looking at perhaps making a tree change or a sea change, um, we are very focused on how do we ensure that we create jobs in regional New South Wales, which is a great lifestyle location, not necessarily an easy location to, to start a business and continue with. Um, just to continue, and you can see here these other areas, I mean, I'm not going to go too much into it, but we're very much focused on the future. Jobs don't happen overnight, they take time, and you would know that yourselves if you're running a small business. Um, it takes time to build it up. Um, yes, we hear all those great stories about, you know, sort of 
They started in a garage and three years later they were billionaires. I have to tell you that um, that doesn't happen very often. Um, so it's a, great, it's a great way to, if you like, popularise the notion of how businesses scale up. But the journeys of most companies um, tend to be over a 10 to 20 year window before you really get to a decent size if that's the direction your business can take. Okay? And think also about technological enablement. It's very critical, we've heard before from, from the gentleman from Google. Um, having a technologically enabled business allows you also generally to scale up a little faster as well. So always think about what am I doing to ensure that I'm using technology. Um, and finally, of course, we need to focus on key segments. Um, we have identified 11 segments, so I won't go through every single one of them, but you can imagine some of the obvious ones. Uh, so FinTech, uh, you know, healthcare area, but the reality is we can't focus on all of them, so we focused on two at this point in time, which is the tourism sector and international education, which are both sort of very obvious choices. Um, Sydney and New South lends itself to both of those, um, but the reality is um, we could be doing a lot more. Um, and think about it from the perspective of those of you that have children who are looking at going into the workforce. Very few of the next generation are ever advocated to go into jobs in those two sectors. Um, to be told, you know, sort of, um, hey, my kids are going to become teachers or they're going to go work in a hotel. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a, oh, you know, that doesn't sound like a real career. I want them to go to university and do, do sort of really great things at universities. Um, consider the fact that all of those jobs are in sectors that are growing incredibly fast. Okay, um, but whereas you look at the legal profession, and the legal profession is currently actually on decline in terms of the amount of jobs that are being created there. So, you know, you have to sort of recalibrate, and to some extent, what you believe in terms of what's actually happening out there. Okay. Um, okay. In terms of what we're focusing on, you can see here, oops, Daisy. Um, we've got here some, some perspective in terms of what our export growth sectors are doing. So Australia's a great com country and clearly, as I said before, strong economically, but let's not forget the fact that if you have a business that is focused on an, an actual population or a customer base that is the immediate customer base, you will by nature always be focused on a small base, okay? We're a very small country in terms of our population, so you really want to be thinking about, okay, do I have an opportunity to export? How can I get to a bigger audience? Um, always stepping outside of, if you like, the immediate reliance on your, your earlier base. Now, what Leila talked about in terms of marketing to me is always interesting. I've come from a marketing background. What I can say to you is that what you want to be thinking about always is not just keeping your existing customers happy, but more importantly, how do I identify that next group of customers? You never want to be reliant on one group of customers, okay? Um, and I've talked about the tourism and international education area, so I'll move on from there. So what are our products? So many, many of you in the room, you're probably thinking, okay, well, that's a nice background, but, you know, kind of where's the money? Um, so we've got a number of different products that we have available. So you can see here, different stages of businesses have, we've developed different types of actual programs for. And we call these, of course, programs. Effectively, they are funded programs, which have essentially um, dollars attached to them. You can see, obviously, at the early stage businesses, what we have here for you is a couple of different products. Um, and depending on where, where you're actually standing in terms of your, should we say, evolution of your business, you may be interested in either of those two products called minimal viable products or alternative to the building partnerships. Now, they are both grant-based. Um, and so at this point in time, they are products that are really targeted towards early stage businesses. Um, there is a criteria, um, and if you want to our website, you can check it out and see if it's something that might be pertinent to what you're currently doing. Um, accelerating growth loans. So we also do direct loans as well. We, are, we have, although we have a fund, I'm interested in recycling, and I've come from business myself. I'm a taxpayer, so I'm interested in getting, obviously, my money back to use it a few more times. So those loans that we're doing are between $100,000 and $300,000. Um, and once again, are going, as you can see there, just the earlier stage businesses, but those that are now moving into a more stable business environment. So it's more the sort of the businesses probably that we're seeing here in this room. Now for larger businesses, uh, we have loan guarantees. <coughs> so this often occurs when a business reaches a certain scale of its maturity and is moving now into requiring, um, well, quite substantial amounts of money, so millions of dollars. Now what we will do is we will engage with a partner um, who will be providing you ready with some degree of, of the actual loan and we would subsequently guarantee a balance of that. Um, so all of these products at this point in time we're working on so there is some degree of 
uh, as we work through them, we're engaging with people directly, um, but many of these will be over time offered as an online application as well. Okay. Um, so in the room, I actually have brought a couple of people along this evening. Um, so we have um, a client engagement team, which for intents and purposes is a sales team. Uh, and their job is to work with clients, um, such as maybe some of the people in this room, and of course externally as well. Um, they have um, a degree of comprehension of a number of different categories. Um, so the idea is obviously if you come from a particular category, that they understand sort of what your space is challenged by. Um, so that's um, what our client engagement team does. Um, and then in addition to that, we obviously have a strategy team, which is all about really how do we ensure that from an advocacy perspective, how do we unlock the barriers? Um, and, and you know, I don't want to use sort of government speak because I think that sort of always blurs the lines of it. To give you some idea to make it real, um, what government can sometimes do is slow things down. Think about the red tape you face if you're starting a business. Um, think about, for example, if you're opening up something really quite straightforward like a shop, you have to go to council and get permissions. You have to, if you're changing anything inside, you have to get further permissions. Um, you know, there is a series of things that get in the way. Um, so, for example, at this point in time, if you want to open up a cafe in New South Wales, it takes up to 18 months. Um, and that's if you want to put chairs outside the actual front of it. So, um, that's not good business practice. We need to be a lot faster. Um, so, that's sort of where we need to get to and where we're trying to actually move um, jobs for New South Wales is into an area where we can advocate to ensure that businesses such as yours we are able to free up and ultimately unlock those barriers. Um, in addition to that, um, you can see here that um, we've got some focus in terms of certain key areas. So I've talked about startups, so this just gives you an idea once again of what that, where those products are. Um, the gazelles, uh, which are, as I mentioned before, these small to medium enterprises that are scaling up quickly. Um, and, and really, you know, it's not something that I think we should get too stuck in the terminology. I mean, there's a lot of terminology out there. I mean, people have used the word unicorns, obviously, to describe companies too. Um, I think we have to remember that's a mythological creature. Um, you know, I'd be really thrilled with the New South Wales. We had a lot more gazelles um, because at the end of the day, they're the businesses that are creating jobs. And I guess that's really, you know, one of the things just to bring us all back to why are we here and why are we ultimately funding to ensure that we ensure that there are more jobs being created. It's as simple as for everybody in the room who is either currently employed or is in the process of maybe employing others, um, who has kids who are looking for work, um, or for that matter, who's been unemployed. Um, jobs provide purpose, jobs provide meaning, and ultimately they ensure that we add to economic prosperity because anyone who's got a job is also paying tax. Um, and in the world that we live in, um, you know, taxes are needed in order to fund all the services that we enjoy, both those that uh, we use every day and also social services as well. So there is an economic and a social need for those types of things to happen and jobs underpin it all, so they're really critical. Um, so finally, just to recap, that's what we do. Um, you've seen some of the products that we have. Uh, we have um, a website that's up and running. So just Google Jobs for New South Wales and you'll find us. Um, we've got, as I said, a couple of members of the team here. I think I'm the last speaker, aren't I, Tony? Super, so um, that means, okay, so Tony will obviously do the wrap up. Um, but look, thank you for having me this evening. And most importantly, um, for those of you that are in small businesses, I thank you for everything that you do, David. Thank you.